the barristers and the bar association are working together to really have programming throughout Law Week. Really the point of this is to expose children who really don't have a real idea of the importance of the decision to really what Brown versus Board means to them and to their education now. Brown v. Board occurred in my lifetime. It was the most impactful case from the Supreme Court in my lifetime for, for certain. I think that the history of, of how it came about uh, how it's been implemented and, and not been implemented it required in the 1964 Civil Rights Act to really implement it because people were determined to, to not uh, fulfill the, the requirements of Brown. Brown at the time applied to the school situations, but the principle, the underlying principle is that no citizen uh, should be subjected to invidious discrimination. There was obvious segregation. There was segregation when I was growing up. I do remember the colored water fountains in the county courthouse. The fact that it was a unanimous court, I think, is hugely important. Had it been a 5-4 decision, as badly as it was received in some parts of the country, that would have been a red signal to many to just totally ignore the court's decision. The Chief Justice at the time understood the importance of having a unanimous decision, worked very hard to fashion that as a unanimous decision, and then authored the opinion himself, and all of those things are, I think, very, very institutionally uh, important. My parents were both school teachers, and so there was a lot of talk because it was going to disrupt their lives because the teachers were going to be reassigned once integration happened. And, and in Houston, you routinely had black kids and white kids being bused past either the white school or the black school to go to a school. Um, so they were very, very uh, determined to keep those schools segregated even though the law of the land was that they were supposed to be integrated. My junior high school, which had been uh, a, a junior-senior high school for most of its uh, existence, and it was a school in which my brothers, who were about 10 years older than me, had graduated from, they began to paint it, they changed the carpet, they air-conditioned the library, they started to do things physically to the school that hadn't been done in a number of years, so we knew that something was different. As I got into high school, when you started hearing about uh, freedom rides mm -hmm. uh, and uh, picketing. I can remember picketing Woolworth's department store in, in, in Ardmore uh, when I was uh, still in high school. There were places we could not go. I remember so well not being able, even though I was Mr. Vitt on the football team and on the track team, um, after the games, we were out of town we would ride back on the buses. There were probably three African Americans on the, on the teams when we were in high school. And uh, the bus would be full of kids. We'd come back victorious, and on the way back, we would pull into a uh, restaurant for the after the game meal. And the coach would get off the bus, go inside, and come back outside and say, well, boys, it's full in there. We'll have to go down the road a little bit. And the other young man, Ronnie, and I would look at, look at each other, and we would just shake our heads because we knew the parking lot was empty. There were no cars in the parking lot, but we knew that they weren't going to let us come in and eat. The team's philosophy, if the two of us couldn't eat, no one would eat. And the other kids on the team supported that and always have supported that. But that happened a lot in Oklahoma growing up. So there was an awareness of, of, of racial issues uh, during this brown time and thereafter. A group of uh, student leaders, and I was one of them, um, from most of the high schools in Philadelphia, uh, did a massive student march on the uh, school board of Philadelphia to demand that uh, African American classes were included in the curriculum. It was a huge demonstration. The dogs were put on us. We were taken into custody. And it was a negative experience, but out of it uh, came African American um, studies. In 1967, uh, which was the year I graduated. Uh, I was, as a senior, we met with our college counselor. My dad uh, came with me. She was telling my father uh, how all of my skills pointed towards the fact that I should be an auto mechanic. And that was where my skills were. She thought I would be an excellent mechanic and I was being directed uh, away from college. As, as a career choice. My father, who was very quiet, uh, but also very studied in his remarks, listened to what she had to say. We left, 
And as we were in the car on the way home, he said, you're going to school, you're going to college. And it was only later, I guess on the, our 25th anniversary, we were gathered uh, at the reunion and I started to ask other people, both men and women of, of color, what they had been told. Uniformly, uh, the men were directed towards away from college. The young ladies, now women, were directed towards being secretaries. But it was interesting to know that this counselor directed us away from educational opportunities. And that was a full decade after, the, after Brown versus the Board of Education. So there's a real distinction between what the law says and what the, re what the reality was. Most, most African-American kids, especially of my age, you know, got, got, got the, uh, the charge when you went to school. The charge was, you know, that, you know, that you're African-American and you're going to have to be twice as good and work twice as hard. And the teachers understood that and the teachers educated you, black, white, and different. All, all the teachers, you know, were, were strong in, in, in making sure that you were educated and making sure that you were prepared. We were very, we were actually taught by very high quality uh, people, but we were using secondhand books. Uh, there were uh, fewer opportunities for our teachers to get trained. So I, I do believe that uh, much of the success that I, that I have is first of all due to those teachers at Turner Elementary School that made sure we got all of the basics. But the quality of the education that I got at uh, St. Peter's and Mount Carmel was really superior. Those lawyers, uh, particularly Thurgood Marshall and those members of the National uh, Association of uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund, who, who fought and, are, and advocated that decision, are just outstanding heroes in my mind, and for them I will always be indebted. I, I would like to think that the decision uh, impacted me and gave me opportunities that I would not have otherwise uh, seen in my life uh, or in my professional uh, uh, career. Do you think you would be where you are today if it were not the change that happened, started you know, with Brown and then later the, the Civil Rights Act? Without question, I would not be. There's no question in my mind, uh, given how the country was and given the history of Brown, given the history of Plessy versus Ferguson, uh, all of that line of cases. Brown was perhaps the, the the, the, the crown of all of those cases to lead us as a people out of that segregated society into an integrated society. And I think per, perhaps the lesson from, from it all was not run to the door now and jump into the other school as much as it was knowing and having the, the security and knowing if we wanted to go, we could. We should never uh, rest on what has been accomplished I think there are challenges uh, every day. Uh, I certainly have thought about whether or not the Brown Board of, uh, of Education decision would be rendered in the political climate today. We have to work to, uh, to constantly uh, try and bring not only legal rights to uh, people of color, uh, but also we have to fight for their political rights and we have to constantly talk about both of those issues. Vigilance and persistence, uh, perseverance, all of those things apply today uh, as they did in 1954. Education is important. It's the, just the uh, foundation of everything that we are able to do. And I think education is under attack. There's a, almost a resegregation process that uh, most of your inner city, city schools are primarily um, uh, diverse. And um, there are a lot of problems with funding, with educational opportunity, uh, with testing. So the legacy of Brown is that with the resegregation, um, governments and school, school districts really are going to have to redouble their efforts to improve the quality of education that our urban children are getting. The challenge today is whether or not that access is actually equal uh, in terms of funding decisions and other issues that come up today in the context of public education. And even though that I'm the head of a private school, I'm I'm a real advocate of public education because 
public education uh, educates the masses, and it's the masses that really make a difference in terms of uplifting our society. For me, education is the great equalizer. That's why I'm so passionate about Girard College. Uh, that's why I think our, our current chancellor, Bill Fadula, was so passionate about education, because here in Philadelphia and elsewhere, it's an opportunity to not only level the playing field, but for me and for my children and my grandchildren, and for those who look like me, to take those same opportunities and move it forward. We need something today, and the only thing I can think of, and I'm certainly not an expert in this area, is some kind of um, re-examination of how we fund public education so that kids who are in the inner city of Philadelphia uh, or North Philadelphia uh, or West Philadelphia have the same amount of resources given to their education as kids living in Narbrith or Ardmore or some of the more fluent areas of this uh, city. We're certainly not where we're supposed to be in terms of Brown versus the true meaning of Brown versus the Board of Education. We clearly have made progress. Uh, we still have a lot to do. It should not be that schools involving African Americans are inferior schools, uh, but that's where we're headed. Your future should not be defined at the moment of your birth. And I won't say that's always the case now, <clears throat> but statistically speaking, if you can look at uh, and tell me when a person is born, are they male, are they female, are they black, are they white, what is the income bracket of their parents, where do they live, <clears throat> that will tell me statistically the chances of them getting a decent education, a white collar job, becoming a professional. Doesn't mean they cannot do it, but it means that the chances of them getting there are much less. Equality is the key word. Uh, it is important that we all understand that uh, we're all equal, but understanding our differences as well. Clearly, the kind of opportunities that we have as a result of the law changing and saying that you're going to have to give uh, opportunities to African Americans, it is also an inure to me uh, as a woman. To increase the pipeline, we've got to start with the, with the high schools, uh, and we've got to get those kids who have talent, and we've got to spend time with those kids who have talent. We have to help them uh, to see that there are other people like themselves who can be successful in the practice of, of, of the law and in, in other uh, professions as well. And when you look at it on a bigger level, we're still waiting for Brown to happen. The, the intent of Brown to happen. Even more important than celebrating the legacy is to celebrate the legacy but realize that we need another generation of lawyers who will have the same courage, the same integrity, the same legal skills, and the same uh, uh, advocacy skills that were those who were a part of the Brown versus Board of Education legal team. Funding of schools is, is, is as important as funding of the military because the children are our hope for the future. If we're not educating them, where are we as a society? I was called upon to go to uh, Kansas uh, a number of years ago. I flew out to, uh, to Kansas City, Missouri and was met by an African-American driver um, who I chatted with on the way over to Kansas City. And he shared with me that he was so proud that he was driving with an African-American judge who was going to come and teach. And uh, on the way there, he said, listen, have you ever been to um, the school where Brown versus Board of Education originated? He said, would you give me the honor of driving me there? I said, would you give me the honor of going with me? And he said, absolutely. So we drove over. And both of us stood there and sat in the car. It was dead silence. And we both cried because of how significant it was, both to the driver and to the judge. It's all about equality, and it's all about opportunity. Um, and I think that, that makes all the difference in the world.